back to first. 1,000 hits with number three tonight. Fastest Astro ever to 1,000. Here's the 0-1. This is going to be a tough play. Bryant, the Cubs win the World Series! Bryant makes the play! It's over! And the Cubs have finally won it all! 8-7-10! and 10. And again the 2-2. And here it is. And swung it, hit the left field deep, way back. Ruin turning around. He will watch a game-winning grand slam for Chris Davis in the bottom of the ninth inning. Do you believe that? A's 8, Texas 5. And it's Davis's third home run tonight. They're going wild at the Coliseum. Now the 2-2. A swing and a pop-up. Perez, Santana, Santana makes the catch. Ball game. The Indians have won the American League pennant. And MLB The Show's coverage of Major League Baseball brings us to the great state of Florida and Marlins Park in Miami. Tonight, the opener of a three-game series between the New York Mets and the Miami Marlins. It's Marlins Baseball, and it's next on The Show. Wei-Yin Chen is ready to go as he'll be on the mound for the Marlins. What's your take on him, H? Well, Matt, he's got an ERA under four. Now, that's not great, and it's not bad either. He's consistent, and he's a very reliable pitcher. So the thing you like about him, give me the ball, I'm going to go get him, and then you get what you get. At the plate, Jose Reyes. And as you can tell easily from the splits, he's really struggled away from their home ballpark. Swing and a liner toward the gap in left center. Ozuna will take care of this one, and Reyes is retired to open up the ball game. And now a chance to meet the Mets. Harold, what's the key to continuing the winning streak? Matt, this is a scary lineup. They've got power and they have speed. They score runs in all different ways. They hit the ball in the ballpark and they score on balls in the gap when you have a run at first base. That's what speed, power combination can do. This is a very tough lineup. Bases are empty, one man out. Line towards center field. A dive, but it'll get past him out in center, and this could roll till tomorrow. And right running hard around second, he's heading for third. And he'll get in there safely. Hey, even the best center fielders make mistakes once in a while, and that's definitely the case here. He totally misplays it, and by the time he recovers, no chance of keeping him from ending up at third. Digging in, Michael Conforto. And the home away splits tell us he's actually quite a bit better hitting on the road than he is at home. He's set. Here's the three and two. Grounded up the first baseline. Bohr comes up with it. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the second out. But meanwhile, the run is in to score. A really good right team at field bat field right there, field. right? Just put the ball Jane in play. He Bruce. does just that, gets the ground ball, and brings home the first run of the game from third. Now a curveball's in there, one and two now. Well, that fooled him right there. Clearly, he was not sitting on that curveball. He couldn't pull the trigger. Pops this one up, just beyond the infield on the right side. Gordon is there for it, and that retires the side. So it's one run, one hit, no errors, and no one left. On now to the bottom of inning number one. The Mets lead it one to nothing. Steven Matz gets the ball for the Mets in this one. HR, what's the word on him? 
Well, Matt, he's got real good stuff. He, he won his ninth game last outing. Uh, he's going for 10 today. And I just think if he can get past the sixth or seventh, he's got a great shot of getting that 10th win. Here's D. Gordon now. Lifetime numbers against Steven Matz. Two hits in seven tries. And this is drifting foul back into the stands. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Again, he sends it out of play. And he'll lay off the curveball that's in the dirt that time, and it's back to even now at two and two. Well, one thing about him, he's an absolute grinder at the plate. You can pretty much count on him battling at the plate every chance he gets. And that's in there, base hit. And he's going to get to second now with nobody out. So he tried to double up with him on a curveball. The problem with that is the first one you recognize, the second one you hit. Nice job. So stepping in, Christian Yelich, as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. And the runner's breaking for third. Pitch is a cold strike. The throw. Not in time as he just does get in there ahead of the throw. You know, I was pretty surprised to see him on the move to third because it didn't seem like he had that much of a lead, but he made it work out. That was really impressive. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. And a big cut at the breaking ball, but he comes up empty, and that's the first out. Time now for a glance at the Marlins lineup card in this one. HR, what's the key in trying to stop their opponent's winning streak? Well, Matt, they find themselves already down one. The big thing here, you realize you got a lot of game left. Just score one run. Try to get right back in the game, even it up, and play the whole nine innings. You can't just play part of the game, play the whole game. Now batting, Giancarlo Stanton. We show you what he did in May versus what he's done so far at the plate in June. A man at third with one away. To two and two now. Well, that is a good pitch. A sinker down with that kind of movement, it is really hard to hit. No wonder he swung and missed. Good bite to that sinker as he gets him to swing through it for route number two. That strikeout changes the whole complexion of the inning. He was definitely point. pitching for it with a runner on third and one out, and he got it. Now it's going to take a hit or something like a wild pitch to get that guy home. So striding in, Justin Bohr. He's not among the league leaders in home runs, but his total does top this ball club. Just a bit jumpy that time, swung on and missed. A swing and a miss as he chased with two strikes. And that will retire the side. No runs on one base hit. One error in the inning and a man left on. Second inning coming up here in South Florida. It's the Mets one and the Marlins nothing. Here's Neil Walker hitting a little over 250 coming into action in this one. Chopped weakly to the left. Up with it now is Prado. Throw the first to be in time, and there's one gone here to start the second. All right, time for majestic defensive alignment for the Marlins. And a second base, you got D. Gordon. I love me some D. Gordon. You talk about range and using your speed properly. He is so fast, but a lot of guys don't use their speed on defense. He does. Fastball is looked at for strike two. And this is fouled at the plate. Now he gets on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. And that one never threatened the zone. It's gone full now to three and two. No pitcher likes to take the count to three and two, especially when you throw a non-competitive pitch like that on two and two. That one wasn't even close. Pro gets him two down. Here's Lucas Duda now. 
He's hitting in the 270s on the season coming into this one. We're in the second, 1 0 Mets early on. Reached for and popped into the air, back behind second. Prado will put this one away, and the side is retired. So they go quietly here in this half inning. On now to the bottom of the second. It's the Mets one, and the Marlins nothing. Here's Marcelo Zuna. He carries a batting line in the 280s to begin this one. A one and one count. Here's the pitch. For Walker now at second. And Walker's throw is right there for round number one. Well, let's take a look at the Mets defense brought to you by Majestic. And I'm looking down there at the catcher, Travis Darno. The thing about Travis, not a big guy, and he's had some injuries along the way. But if he can stay healthy, he's got a great pitching staff to catch. Digging in now, Martin Prado. And he really thrives in the batter's box here at home. Something to keep an eye on in this one. One out, nobody on. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. HR, these Mets as they enter play here tonight. They come in riding a five-game winning streak, and they've really got things clicking. Look out. They're starting to put it together. When you get to this territory and you start moving into a week of solid baseball, that's a club starting to come together. And I'm looking at one right now. JT Stepping up now, JT Real Muto. Lifetime numbers against Steven Matz. A number of meetings. He's one for seven. Ball line fouled as that'll get over the Marlins dugout. Two out, nobody on. Curve ball, and he buckled him, but it's full three and two. Well, I don't know if that was a great take or he's just flat out full because that curve ball was really close. Hot shot to first base and a great play to end the inning. One, two, three, go the Marlins. They're on the short end of a one to nothing score. Here's the catcher Travis Darno. He brings an average in the 260s into this one. Here it comes on one and one. Takes a look at one catching the outside corner. And he can't get out of the way there. So the leadoff man will be aboard to open up the inning. Looks like he was trying to bust him inside and he might have held on to it just a little bit too long. Just like that, the leadoff man is aboard. Stepping in now, Steven Matz. And they'll indeed have the pitcher squaring around as he puts this one down. And you can't ask for much more out of a pitcher than that. The sacrifice works to perfection. Shortstop number seven. Here's the shortstop now, Jose Reyes. 0 for 1 here in the early going. Here's the 3 and 0 pitch. Sent in the air out to straightaway central. Yelich is under it. Two down. And no tag at second. He'll head back there with two away now. The third baseman, number five, David Wright. Here's the third baseman, David Wright. He smacked a triple and later scored his first time around. The one and two pitch to short. Fielded by Hechevarria. Throw on to first gets him and the side is retired. Mets leave one, but they're up one to nothing. Here's Echevarria now. He enters play hitting down in the 240s for the year. One and one, here it comes. High in the air out to center field. And there to take it in is Granderson for the first out of the inning. 
So one gone now as we give you a look at where these two teams find themselves entering play in the National League's Eastern Division race. So digging in now, Wei in Chen, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. A one and one count. Here's the pitch. Looks like he swung it underwater that time for strike two. Ready to deliver the one and two. Just got a piece to the right side. That's a foul ball. Here he comes again. One two. To first. Duda's up with it. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. Well, it's still early, but it's also worth noting that he'd be in line for the win if this keeps up as we take a look at the league leaders in games won this season. And as you see, he's right up there among league leaders in that department. Digging in to try it again, D. Gordon. And then it seems like this starter is just dominating the game right now. Feels like we're seeing a lot of three up, three down innings. No doubt about that, Matt. Hey, I've enjoyed watching him go about his business, but I'm also interested to see if this offense can figure out a way to get a couple of cracks in his armor before it gets too late. Yeah, that remains to be seen. Hit out towards second. And that's through for a hit. So the two out hit will bring Christian Yelich in this inning. He's been looking really good. Another hit, another multi-hit game. This hot streak has been really fun to watch him perform. Into the box, Christian Yelich. Big breaking ball and a beauty that time, one and two. That curveball just frozen. That's one of those big curveballs you're expecting to go start at to like this one did. A swing and a miss. That retires the side, and that will do it. One left for Miami. It remains 1 nothing. With Harold Reynolds, Dan Plezak, Matt Vaskersian, as Michael Conforto digs into the left handed side of the batter's box to start things out. Now here's the pitch. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Yelich is right there. And he puts it away for the first down. The right fielder number 19. Here's Jay Bruce now. Jay 0 for 1 for Bruce. him here in this one. One run, just one hit. One error in the game for the Mets thus far. Slider right over the middle taken for a strike might have been taking all the way right there that pitch couldn't have split the strike zone any better and you can bet he wants that one back to the plate and that is swung on and missed he's down on strikes and the first two are retired here to begin inning number four Boy, that's the best pitch in baseball the right there with two strikes that baseball. elevated fastball Deal every Walker. hitter thinks that hey they can do something with that but most of the time you get the result that you saw right there a big swing and a miss and another strikeout. In now, Neil Walker. There's a swing and a drive hit well out to right field. Stanton going back on it. He's there to track it down, and that'll end the inning. Down in order go the Mets. They lead it one to nothing. Riding in once again, Giancarlo Stanton. He'll lead it off against Steven Matz. Here's the one and one delivery. This one's down to third. Throw by right is in time for out number one. Now batting. First baseman. Ready for another chance. Justin Bohr comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. No runs, two hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. Swing and a miss on the sinker, and it's one and two. Got him. So he's down on strikes for the second time here tonight. 
that was a good Alvin. job tying him up inside on that strikeout pitch. Marcel. It wasn't even in the strike Ozuna. zone, but with the hitter protecting with two strikes, that's the kind of pitch you can get him to offer at, and he's probably not going to do much with it when he does make contact. Into the box now, Marcelo Zuna. And he'll just get a piece here as this is chopped foul at home plate. Once again, a 3 2. Pulled high in the air out to left field. Conforto waits on it. And that's the third out. Curtis Granderson will start things off when we return. It's the Mets one and the Marlins nothing. In is Curtis Granderson. He's 0 for 1 thus far. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. And the 0 2 here is fought off at the plate and we'll do it again. Ready with another 0 2. Oh, and he dusted off him the off the plate one. that time. Some mind games being played now. It's 1 and 2. And the pitch. And he pops it up, drifting just beyond the infield. Bohr will stay with it as he backs up and puts it away. One gone. First baseman, number 21. Here's Lucas Duda now. Duda. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. The wind up and the 0 2 pitch. In the dirt, but swung on and missed. Riamuto corrals it, and the throw is made to record the second out of the inning. Now batting. Captain. Here's the catcher, Travis, Travis Darno. Darno. He was plunked with a pitch in his first trip to the plate. Here it comes. And he lays off, so it's full now, three and two. Now a ball hit pretty well to the left but this is going to wind up in the seats foul. This should end the inning as it's sent out to second. And indeed it will he throws him out at first and the side is retired. Mets go down one two three but they're on top one to nothing. Martin Prado now comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. The wind up and the 0 2 pitch. On the ground up the middle. And this will get on through past Reyes for a base hit. So the leadoff man is aboard to start out the inning. That is a great two strike approach. Spread his legs out, kept the hands the back, and just punched the ball Patrick. through for a ground Jay ball base hit. From Utah. Standing in now, JT Realmuto. And a good sinker there gets him swinging for the first out. Well, I'm glad we get another so look at that beauty of a pitch right there. Stop. You can't on spot 80. a sinker in a better location Maria. because even if you do get the bat on the ball, there's not a whole lot you could do with that. Textbook sinker. Stepping in now, a Danny Echevarria. In front of the change up there as this is chopped foul at home plate. The next three, two. Just staying alive, putting together a really good at bat here. He's set. Here's the three and two. There's a high foul ball as it finds a lucky fan in the upper deck for a souvenir. Oh, that grounder got him. Well, Matt, that's the sixth game. He's got a base hit in now. You got to start a streak somewhere. I start paying attention about six games. He's swinging about pretty good. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Wei in Chen. And he may instead be asked to bunt. We'll see how they approach the situation with one away. And this is scooped away and stays foul. So now the question becomes what to do with two strikes? Bunt sign still on with two strikes as he puts this one down. Only plays to first, so the pitcher does his job as it's a successful sacrifice. Now batting. Second baseman. 
Digging in and looking for more. D. Gordon, as he's got a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing run just 90 feet away at third. And he struck him out his seventh of the ball game, and that ends the inning. Marlins strand a pair. They still trail one nothing. Digging in for his second at bat, Stephen Matz. Opportunity to bat for himself with his guys up a run here in the sixth. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. And he'll come back with one in the dirt as the count moves to 2 and 1 now. Well, it's been a good outing so far, but he hasn't really racked up the strikeout totals that you might think, Dan. Yeah, it amazes me how every game you pitch can be so different, Matt. Sometimes it feels like guys can't touch you and you're just punching everyone out, but other times. You don't have your good stuff and you really rely on movement and location to get outs. That's been the case for him today and it's really working. That leadoff walk is a great way to start this inning when you're looking to pad the lead. Could be the beginning of good things here in this half inning. Here's the shortstop now Jose Reyes 0 for 2 on his line thus far. Ready on three and one. Here it comes. And he lays off there. Ball four. So back to back walks have him in business here with nobody out. Looks like the pitching coach so might want to have a chat here. Five. Yeah, and I'm not sure I agree with it either. Most pitchers, like when they're in a groove, they just want to get back on the bump and compete. Sometimes visits like these are just like a formality. Striding in once again, David Wright. He tripled earlier, making him one for two in the ball game. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. He lays out for it, but he can't pull it in. And they get the force over there for the first out. And I'm not sure what that guy's doing out there as he gets forced out in third by an outfielder. Man alive. Conforto. Digging in once again, Michael Conforto. 0 for 2 with a run batted in for him thus far. Getting a few steps off a second there. Now the pitch. Oh, just a brutal hop, and it goes right by him. Reyes is on his way home. The throw to third. And the run will score from second to make this a 2 0 ball game. And he's out on a strong throw. And this is a nice decision here in the outfield. The run's going to score easily, but he sees he might have a shot at that guy taking third, so he gets off a really good throw to gun him down. In now, Jay Bruce. Hard hit ball to second, but right there is the second baseman, and that will retire the side. So one run on one hit, no errors, and a runner left. On to the bottom of inning number six. Mets out in front, two to nothing. In is Christian Yelich. He's hoping to avoid the hat trick. He struck out in each of his first two plate appearances so far. Something has to give. Here's the payoff pitch. And here's a ball hit in the air. And that'll get down for a base hit. He'll get it into second. And he's able to hustle his way up to second as he'll reach here with a two base hit. Finally, a little something for them to get excited about. Yeah, a rally can begin with the single swing of the bat. And this might be their chance right here. They've struggled to produce a lot of runs, but there he is at second base. A shot to the outfield scores him. Then who knows what kind of roll they could get on. Got to take it one good at bat at a time. Into the box now, Giancarlo Stanton. One thing you try to do as a hitter is figure out what pattern the pitcher is pitching. I can't cover the whole plate. He's done a masterful job of pounding them on the outside half for strikes, and they haven't figured it out yet. Now batting. Digging in to try it again. Justin Bohr, 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts for him so far. He's set. Here comes the 1 1. Swing and a miss, and it's a ball and two strikes here. This is going to be an interesting at bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strike out here, so we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. Runner at second here with one man out. Got him. 
And that's the third time we've written a K next to his name in this one. What's your take on all the strikeouts we see in the game okay, today, Dan? That was his third tonight, and it seems we're seeing that a lot more these days. Yeah, Matt, there's been a real change in philosophy as far as hitting in baseball today. A lot of guys think now that an out is an out. A strikeout is just as good as a regular out, but we're seeing strikeouts at an alarming rate in baseball right now. And he lays off for a ball, two and one. Well, it's two and one now, and we haven't seen a fastball from him in this at bat yet. As a hitter, you've probably got to sit on that right now. Throw to first in plenty of time, and the side is retired. Marlins leave one. They're down two to nothing. Welcome back to South Florida. Getting set for the seventh inning now with the Mets out on top. But first, let's check out the game summary through the first six innings of baseball. Your Brad Ziegler is on to pitch now from the bullpen the now to start inning number, number seven. 29, Brad Ziegler. Neil Walker will be the first one to greet him here as he'll be forced to turn around and hit from the left side now. Into the windup, here's the two and one pitch. Now a swing and a ball chopped foul right at home plate. Into the windup, here comes the two two pitch. And a swing and a miss as Walker is down on strikes for the first down. That swing tells me he was really trying to get a pitch out front and rip it down the line, but that wasn't a great pitch to do it on. It's really not the best two strike approach either. Into the box, Curtis Granderson. No yep, offer on out. that one. Two balls and a strike. Lifetime versus this arm. A three for 12 line. And Granderson trying to work his way aboard. He's got it to three and one now. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right-hander is up and throwing. Aye. Called strike, and that'll run it full. Now the pitch. And he lost him here on 3 2 as that pitch misses. It's ball four. First baseman number 21. Lucas Ready once again. Duda. Lucas Duda. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout in this one. Runner at first here, one man out. And this is chopped foul near the plate, and the count will move to 1 and 2 now. The one and two pitch. He's running towards second. Swing and a little tapper. Come on now, let's go. He'll try again, one, two. And this one's tapped foul at home plate. Another one, two delivery. He's running again. Chopped foul over towards the dugout. Again, he's off for second. Swing, and that's hit out of play up into the plaza level. Here's another one, too. And now he's on the move again for second. Scooped up. And indeed, no look at second. He'll go straight to first and take the shoe out. And he's safe. Hey, that's some real aggressive oh, base running right there. What's going on the pitch and on the ground ball goes from first all the way around the third and makes it safely. And you don't see that very often. Standing in now, Travis Darno. A swing and a high drive to right center field. Stanton racing back, and they'll extend their lead even further as the runs in to score from third. It's a three nothing game. Well, that's a big base hit right there. Now you got a three run lead. You always play to beat that bloop and that blast that can hurt you late in the game. And now they've got that cushion. In now, Stephen Matz. 
This one's chopped foul right at the plate. The count moves now to one and two. Obviously, he wants to help himself out right here. With two strikes, that's going to be difficult to do. Let's see if he can put the ball in play. Good lead off a second there. Now the pitch. Got him swinging, and that will end the inning. Ladies and gentlemen. One for the Mets on the double by Darno. Get up and stretch. It's 3-0 New York. No walks yet. Here's the delivery. That one's in there, three and one. Well, this offense finds themselves struggling right now, and they're down a few runs. They got to try to manufacture, get somebody on, maybe hit and run, and then you look for the big ball. Looks like right now, everybody's swinging for the downs. They got to turn it around a little bit, play a little small ball, get it going. And that misses ball four. It's a leadoff walk to start the home seventh. Well, these guys have had a hard time making contact all game long, racking up a bunch of K, so that's their first walk of the game. We'll see if that gets them going a bit. Looks like a left-hander has begun to get loose out in that Mets bullpen. Looks at a curveball on the outside corner. Well, with the leadoff man getting on right there, Matt, they are falling so far behind. They have to capitalize. They have to get some runs to get back in this thing. Struck him out, and he becomes the ninth strikeout victim thus far. The bottom third of the lineup hasn't put up a lot of resistance in this one. Pretty much has been sure outs other than that one hit. That really puts a lot of pressure on other guys to make stuff happen. These aren't the guys you usually count on, but it certainly helps if they can do something productive. Good job to spoil that one away, and he stays alive. I think a big reason why he's been so effective in this one that he's been just about getting ahead of every hitter. Seems like every one of them are 0-2, 1-2, and, and it's just about every at-bat. And when that's the case, your chances of getting a good pitch to hit are way worse. Hey, that's a base hit right there. They got two runners on. This may be their best opportunity to get on the board. They've been shut out the whole game. Ichiro Suzuki will come out and pinch hit here in a big spot. Number 51, Ichiro. And this is sent out to Reyes. This could be two. And the throw will go to second as they get the force out. And the return will pull the first baseman off the bag, so they'll just settle for the one out. And kids, this is why you always go hard into second base. Could have been an easy double play ball, but the slide really impacts the throw to first, and they wind up only getting one out on the play. Good, aggressive, legal slide that time. Here's D. Gordon now. And Dan, what's the plan of attack here for the guy on the mound? Well, I think they have to go right after him. He's pretty unlikely to take you deep, but if you allow him to get on base, the chances of him scoring in time this game become a lot greater. Rounded down the third baseline, and this will get by him at third, down the line. It's a fair ball. In the score, the runner from third. Scoring is the runner from third, and that'll cut the lead down to one. Usually a hitter will shorten his swing with two outs, but not this guy. He puts a big charge into this one and drives in a couple of runs along the way. That can be frustrating as a pitcher when you had a guy on the ropes and you couldn't finish him off, especially when he drives in runs. Well, now here comes the Mets manager, Terry Collins, on his way to the mound. And it looks as though that's going to be all for his starter here tonight. So as he departs, he can't lose this ball game, but he is responsible for the runner at second, meaning it'd be a no decision if that run comes across to score. So they'll go to the bullpen now, and it'll be the left-hander here to face the upcoming left-handed batter. Stepping in now, Christian Yelich. Boy, he just threw that fastball by him. And then that's a pretty good example of why he's such a great pitcher. Yeah, stuff. Stuff is obviously the important key to being dominant on the mound, but it doesn't mean a whole lot if you don't have outstanding control to go along with it. But he does, and he really spotted that pitch. And another foul ball. 
Trying to hold the lead. Here's the delivery. Grounded to first. Duda's got it. And he'll step on the bag himself. And the inning is over. So it's two runs on two hits. No errors and a runner left. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now. It's the Mets three and the Marlins two. Your Brian Ellington please. has been summoned from now the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eight. 49, Brian Ellington. Into the box now, Jose Reyes. 0 for 2 with a walk for him so far. And there's ball two now. That's a big fastball, obviously. And we're going to see this reliever throw it a lot. Go back to New York, man. He's set. And the 2 1 pitch. And a fastball just a bit up. He's set. Here's the 3 1. A good knee high changeup taken for a strike. Probably better that he let that pitch go anyway. After seeing a lively fastball in the pitch before, it's pretty hard to sit back enough on a well thrown changeup. Hit in the air after straightaway left. There to handle it is Ozuna, and there's one away. The third baseman, number Stepping five. in and ready for another right. shot, David Wright. He reached on a fielder's choice previously. This one, everything we could have hoped for, three to two in inning number eight. Hit hard to short. Throw to first is in time to take care of right, and that's the second out. Up next for the Mets. Left fielder. Digging in and looking Michael for more. Conforto. Michael Conforto. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. And he finds a way to catch the zone here. It's one and two. And he chased it in the dirt. Real Muto finds it. The throw to first is in time, and the inning is over. The danger is Giancarlo Stanton will get the first shot when we return. It's the Mets three and the Marlins two. Now in the box, Giancarlo Stanton. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. He's set. Here's the 2 2. And all that gets him on the mound. But he is able to recover as he gets the out at first. One away now. Now batting, first baseman, Justin. Bohr. Now at the plate, Justin Bohr. Three at bats for him in this one, all ending with him going down on strikes. He's ready with the 2 2 pitch. And he'll strike out here yet again, as it's been a ball game to forget thus far. Four strikeouts. Wow, he's just a lost now cause in this one. That's the fourth time he struck out in this game alone, and that's not something you'll forget very quickly. That's about as bad of a day as you can have. Into the box, Marcelo Zuna. Now a ball swung on and heading for the stands in right, and that'll move the count to one and two now. Cut fastball misses two and two. Good sinker that time as he gets a piece and chops it foul at home plate. Another try at 2 2. Popped up, calling for it, Duda, and the inning is over. Jay Bruce will be the one to lead us off when we return. We've played eight full. It's the Mets three and the Marlins two. Ah, the famous neon lights of Ocean Drive in Miami Beach. Welcome back to baseball on the show. Severino Gonzalez enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Here's Jay Bruce now. No hits in three tries so far. He's struck out once. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Hard hit ball to second. Gordon is up with it. Throw on to first for the out, and that is how the ninth inning gets underway. Good range showing off into the hole right there. That's not an easy play, but these guys make it look that way sometimes.
standing in now, Neil Walker. Swing and a line drive. And, oh, he can't knock this one down as it zips right by him into left. He absolutely smoked that ball right there. The infielder was ducking to get out of the way of it. The center fielder, Curtis Branderson. In now, Curtis Granderson. And this pitch is taken high and away to fill the count. It's three and two. We could see the runner in motion here on a three-two count with one out. There's a pretty good chance he's going to get a pitch to swing at. And if not, it's ball four anyways. Runner goes for second. Well hit the other way, and it's into the gap. Walker rounds the corner and is headed home. Now the relay home. And he will beat the tag safe at the plate. Well, that base hit right there gives him two-run cushion. When you have a two-run cushion late in the game, you got to feel pretty good about yourself. Stepping in now, Lucas Duda, as it's on the ground toward the hole. Gets dirty and gloves it. It's there, and he's out. Great diving stop down there at first to get the out. If that ball gets to the outfield, the whole complexion of this inning drastically changes. Into the box now, Travis Darno. He swings and grounds it to short, and he delivers with two outs in the ninth. It's a base hit. And the runner scores from third as they extend their lead. Oh, ground ball up the middle. That's going to score a run right there. That's Jerry a nice job of just staying up the middle, not trying to pull a ball or get out in front. Just stay up the middle, and it paid off. One Ligaris. We'll look for some two-out magic here as he'll Number pinch 12. hit with two gone and a runner at first. Lagare. In the dirt here, runner holds as the count moves to two and one. Ready to deal, here's the two-one. Looks at a sinker on the outside corner. And now this ball's lifted in the air down the right field line, but this will get back into the seats, so the count holds at two and two. Here's another 2-2. Two -two. Pitch swung on and hit in the air. On the move is Stanton. He gets there to make the play, and that ends the inning. So it's two runs on three hits, no errors, and a runner left on. Sixth, seventh, and eighth place hitters scheduled to start the bottom of inning number nine. It's the Mets five and the Marlins two. Jerry Spamilia, if the man called on to close this one and earn a save in the night. Jagaris from India. Ready for another shot now. Martin Prado. He'll lead it off against Jerry's Familia, who'll try to close the door in this one. Hit on the ground out to short. Right there is Reyes. And he's retired one away. Now batting. Stepping in, JT Realmuto. Over three with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame. No contact there, and it's one and two. Swing and a line drive, but a quick glove at third, and there are two gone. The batter number three, shortstop. Here's Echeverria now. Lifetime against Familia. Four for 14. 
Bases are empty here with two men out. Just got a piece up the line. Throw on to first is going to be in time to get him. And the Mets make it six straight victories now as this one is over. You can just see that the confidence is radiating off of them out there right now. That's six wins in a row. And this looks like a train that's not about to slow down anytime soon. 5-2 the final score tonight. Steven Matz gets to double digits with his 10th win of the year. Wei-Yin Chen pitched well, allowing only two earned, but ends up taking the loss. Jerry Spamilia closes the door for the save, his 20th of the season. So that'll just about do it. For Harold Reynolds, Dan Plezak, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Baskersian. This has been a presentation of MLB The Show. For more, don't forget to check out theshownation.com. The final line score for our ball game tonight for the victorious New York Mets. Five runs. Six hits. Here's the 0-1. Story hits it high and deep right field. Way back and gone! Three-run bomb. Welcome to the big leagues, Trevor Story. How do you like that? I've got goosebumps. Me too. Not gonna lie. Me too. Mom and dad are jumping for joy here at Chase Field.